CNN Plus is officially dead and will go down as one of the worst media blunders in history. I'd like to give a shout out to our good friend Seamus Coughlin over at Freedom Tunes, who said somebody at CNN said, hey, nobody's watching our show. I got an idea. Let's make them pay for it. Well, they didn't want to. It didn't work. And boy, did they waste three hundred million dollars. But it's worse than that. CNN Plus wasn't even their core product. They were making like B sides. Now, the fascinating thing here are the excuses. Oh, you know, CNN Plus was failing not because people hate CNN, but, you know, it's because there's so much competition in the space. And CNN was really the only news media streaming service that explains it. I mean, the idea that someone would pay for a streaming service dedicated to news just is not true, except it is true. You know, I know Timcast.com. We promote it all the time. It is a news media platform. Okay, to be fair, we do have cultural content. But for the most part, people become members because they're supporting our journalists and they're getting access to our political conversations in news and culture. CNN Plus is basically that. An argument between Chris Wallace and Jen Psaki? Yeah, they're arguing political issues. But nobody wanted to watch CNN because CNN lies all the time. But let me just be real with you guys. Is it really about streaming platforms? I need only point to The Daily Wire with 600,000 subscribers and Fox Nation. Maybe you want to say, oh, it's the older crowd. They don't want to watch it. No, 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 no. Fox Nation is doing phenomenally. So they have every excuse in the book as to explain why it is that CNN Plus failed. How about this? How about you guys lie, omit information, and you are generally just bad at what you do. These are the dirty games they want to play. Now, I suppose I can say there is one legitimate non-ratings-based reason as, this, as to why CNN Plus collapsed, and it's that Warner Brothers Discovery, which merged and now owns CNN, doesn't want to have anything to do with this. But I don't think that's the core reason. CNN Plus reportedly had one point, uh, I'm sorry, 150,000 subscribers. And at an average of about five bucks per month, they're pulling in, you know, let, let's, let, let's be fair. It was like six bucks a month for the service. They did offer discounts, but let's just say they're pulling in nine bucks a month. 300, I'm sorry, nine million, $300 million invested in this. And they were planning on putting in a billion. They're not going to make that money back with overhead. What are their profit margins? Clearly not enough. It was a big mistake and good riddance in this world. The narrative is shifting in the world of media manipulation. They are losing control. And now beyond this, we also have other really big news in the narrative news cycle. Controlling the narrative, it's very important to the establishment, to primarily the Democrats, but also the uniparty neocon Republican types. They use social media. They use CNN. They're losing Aside from the fact that CNN Plus is collapsing, I do want to talk to you about Elon Musk securing $46.5 billion to buy Twitter outright. So this, you know, I wanted I wanted to do the Elon Musk story. I'm like, I got to do this earlier, but I'm just like, this is one big story. CNN's failure and Elon Musk's success is all in the same vein of we are tired of being lied to. We don't take you seriously. Your products are garbage. And I gloat and celebrate the end of CNN Plus, as I've stated. I will not lament the firing and the loss of these jobs. No, I'll go buy a cake. Okay, I've not been eating a lot of sugar or gluten, but I will make a sugar-free almond cake with Allulose buttercream icing. I've been doing keto. You get the point. Let's read the story. Before we get started, head over to, not Post Millennial, head over to TimCast.com. Well, they're cool too. But head over to TimCast.com, become a member if you want to help support our work. Because, you know, I made the joke. I used to say, if you share this, if everybody shared this video, we'd be bigger than CNN overnight. And then we, we had more daily active users than CNN Plus. And I was like, okay, well, I, I believe we did. And it's like, okay, well, we did it. Thank you all for your support. And now they're shutting it down. Let's let's storm the hill. They are losing ground. Their lies don't work. We are winning. With your support as members, you make all of this possible. We got Chicken City. 
You know, I talk about it, but it's 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 legit cultural content. We just put up one of our first Chicken City cartoon shorts, and we've got more coming. Gag humor that's good for the whole family because we're going to build culture. We're going to report the news. We are going to call out the liars, fact check the lies. And as a member, you'll get access to our TimCast IRL exclusive podcast episodes about a half an hour long, Monday through Thursday at 11 p.m. And prove them wrong. When they come out and they're like, well, you know, it's just people don't want news services. You know, it's oh, lies. Fox Nation, TimCast.com. So smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. Because if you do, maybe one day we will be bigger than CNN altogether. But let's read this here from CNN Business. CNN Plus will shut down at the end of April. Oh, you hate to see it, right? No, not really. Not this time. Even the joke doesn't work. You'll love to see it. CNN Plus, the streaming service that was hyped as one of the most significant developments in the history of CNN, will shut down on April 30th, just one month after it launched. Oh, I want to laugh so hard. CNN Plus customers will receive prorated refunds of subscription fees, the company said. Yeah, you'll get your dollar back. The decision was made by new management after CNN's former parent company, Warner Media, merged with Discovery to form Warner Brothers Discovery earlier this month. Oh, man, the mergers. The prior management team's vision for CNN Plus runs counter to Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav's plan to house all of the company's brands under one streaming service. Some CNN Plus programming may eventually live on through that service. Other programming will shift to CNN's main television network. Quote, in a complex streaming market, consumers want simplicity and an all-in service which provides a better experience and more value than standalone offerings. And for the company, a more sustainable business model to drive our future investments in great journalism and storytelling. Ugh. I threw up in my mouth a, little, mouth a little bit. Discovery's streaming boss, J.B. Peretti, said in a statement, or Peret, we have very exciting opportunities ahead in the streaming space, and CNN, one of the world's premier reputational assets, will play an important role there. Perrette added, yo, your viewers are old people. The same is true for Fox News, but at least Tucker Carlson can muster up some millennial audience. The entirety, I would, I, I believe it's, uh, um, I, I got to pull up the numbers. Around 90% of the viewers for TimCast, be it this channel, Tim Pool, TimCast uh, News, or TimCast IRL, 18 to 54. So we are, we, we, we absolutely, hit. the 20, 25 to 54 is the key demo, but we're even getting 18 to 24 as well. It's not the biggest demographic, but it's bigger than the older than 54 crowd. So we got the young people. I always say, uh, I often say, if you're watching this right now, your name is John and you're a 33 year old white male just because there's a large percentage uh, of people. Well, I could also say your name is your name is Jesus and you're Hispanic male, but, you know, 28 years old, too. And I some of you are probably that. So it's, it's a joke. The point is, we know our demographics and it is overwhelmingly millennial, mostly people like me. We find that their moderates tend to be from the Midwest. Isn't that crazy? The largest portion of uh, uh, watchers of this content. And it's probably because I grew up in Chicago in a typically, you know, liberal area, but we're sick of the Democrats, we're sick of the media lies, and we're millennials. Overwhelmingly dudes, too. They're going to say, Perrette and incoming CNN CEO Chris Licht notified staffers of the decision in a meeting on Thursday afternoon. Licht bluntly told employees it was a uniquely ishy situation. Hundreds of CNN staffers may lose their jobs. Ha! Lick said in an internal memo that all CNN Plus employees will continue to be paid and receive benefits for the next 90 days to explore opportunities at CNN, CNN Digital, and elsewhere in the Warner Brothers Discovery family. Now, now, I think it's fair to say it is possible the core reason as to why CNN Plus is being shut down is because Discovery wants CNN as a brand under one umbrella. I don't care for having tons of streaming services. That's true. But I don't think that's the real reason, because if C you know it, if CNN Plus signed up a million people on day one, they would not be shutting it down. They'd be like, whoa, how many we're making? We're, we're, I mean, we're going to be making millions upon millions of dollars. Oh, man, did I do my math wrong with uh, 150,000 uh, subscribers? I'm sorry, 100, 150,000 subscribers at about you know, six, six uh, uh, bucks per, per subscriber, they're only, they're only going to be making a, a million or so off of, uh, uh, off of their subscribers. If they were charging 10 bucks a month, they'd be making a lot more, but they're barely making any money. 
I got my, ra- my math way wrong on that one. Someone should have smacked me for that one. They're going to say, Lick said in a, in a town hall style meeting with staffers, this was an incredibly successful launch, but simply incompatible with the newly merged company plans. It's not your fault that you had the rug pulled out from underneath you. He said as he vowed to minimize the impacts to staff. During the town hall, Perret expressed some frustration with the prior leadership of CNN, which was led by Jeff Zucker until Friday, and Warner Media, which, has, which was led by Jason Kylar until early April. Some of this was avoidable, but prior leadership decided to just keep going with the planned March launch of CNN Plus, despite the impending merger. The executive vi- uh, vice president in charge of CNN Plus and all of CNN's digital businesses, Andrew Morse, who worked closely with Kyler and Zucker, will depart the company after a transition period. They were making almost no money. They wanted to invest a billion dollars. It's just not going to play out. Well, of course, RIP CNN Plus. RIP CNN is trending. Oh, apparently Tim Pool is trending as well. And here you have the meme of CNN Plus being shut down. My friends, I would like to uh, uh, pour one out figuratively for our good friend, Chris Wallace, who left Fox News for an offer at CNN Plus. And uh, what you gonna do now, buddy? Yikes, talk about a bad decision. Oof. We have this other story. CNN Plus will shut down April 30th, just one month after launch. So um, I was off by an order of magnitude when I said their numbers. Uh, You know, it happens. What are they making? Just under a million bucks? If we're being generous, that is abysmally, abysmally bad for the network. And thus, they can't sustain themselves when they were looking at making a billion dollar investment. Check this out. We have from Axios. They say that uh, uh, CNN Plus launched just a few weeks ago with a $300 million investment. It's being shuttered due to a strategic misalignment between Discovery executives and CNN executives. I don't buy that for a minute. They go to mention how much they were planning on on dumping into it and how they wanted to make CNN Plus profitable. The service was shut down because CNN and its new parent company disagreed. CNN's original plan was for CNN Plus to become profitable in four years by investing $1 billion into the service. A profitable service would have diversified CNN's revenue long term around a digital asset outside of its website, increasing its valuation and potential, executives believe. But Discovery thought a separate subscription app for news didn't make sense for its own strategy long term and worried about the business economics around the launch. CNN had already spent $300 million to launch the service. It launched on March 29th, and it only had around 10,000 daily active users. Wow. How much money were they spending every day to run this garbage service? As of Tuesday, CNN Plus had roughly 150,000 subscribers. Okay. So they were charging six bucks a month, not 60. That's where I accidentally added a zero. And they even offered a discount to $3 a month. So they're looking at best case scenario around $900,000 per month. Oh, it is just so bad. So bad. And they weren't even going to get that much. Wow. That's really crazy. When you really think about it, that is absolutely insane. I, I, I have to be honest. I thought they could muster up more than that. Well, my friends, I bring you to Wesley Lowry, verified Twitter user and journalist. He tweets, feel horrible for the CNN plus folks, especially for the producers and behind the scenes folks who will be hit the hardest as a veteran of two failed attempts at a new, uh, new uh, at a news for streaming Quibi and Paramount plus. I obviously don't have the answers, but do have a few thoughts. I'm not sure we're being honest about the demand desire for streaming news or television news at all. I'm not sure we're being honest about how diminished the standing draw name recognition of the most prominent broadcast journalist is compared to the past. How wrong do you have to be, Wesley? I mean, come on. Have you even Googled this stuff? The premise of CNN Plus seemed to be that people wanted and would pay for more CNN. 60 Minutes Plus had the same premise, for what it's worth. That logic doesn't seem sound to me. Another path, of course, would be to put the actual product itself behind the paywall on the streamer. If I love 60 Minutes, I'll pay to watch Anderson and Leslie on a streamer. If I love CNN, I'll pay for Wolf or Tapper. But I want the real product, not the B-sides and outtakes. These people are insane. They're insane. They have no idea what they're talking about. They need to look in a mirror, man. The reason, Wesley, the reason they failed is not because people don't want their content. Well, oh, no, no, no. That's actually the reason. People don't want their content. You're trying to deflect saying that it's because it was B-sides. It's because people don't want a new streaming service. The Daily Wire is news. 
Now, it's opinion. I get that. But what do you think it is when Chris Wallace gets into an argument with Jen Psaki? Is that news? No, it's it's political arguing. We do that on Timcast. We get subscribers. CNN Plus was the only standalone news streamer. A really bold bet. Does Wesley have amnesia? I love saying about these people. They like Fox Nation exists. Fox Nation has documentary and news. What are you talking about? A really bold bet. No, it wasn't. Fox Nation works. CNN said, let's try doing that too. Jake Tapper's book club is not news. The future as it holds into HBO Max, uh, HBO Max probably looks a lot like ABC and Hulu. And less sex- su- successfully Paramount Plus model. With CNN content, in essence, providing an entertainment platform with its news section. That, to me, seems like a more sound model. But also, is a smaller model in which there are many fewer resources being devoted to news in which that news has to compete with entertainment. In other words, just like broadcast television. My macro take here is that the biggest problem in American media is that as a capitalistic enterprise, it requires the people through their consumption choices and wallets to resource quality journalism, which in aggregate, they do not. We have the media we democratically choose. This dude lives under a rock. Media Matters says... Tucker Carlson is more extreme than ever a year into his expanded role at Fox Nation. Huh. John Neffel. John, buddy, how's it going? Um, Thank you for pointing out your opinions on Fox Nation. Thank you for pointing out that Fox Nation is making money and that Tucker Carlson has been on the platform for a year. The platform has been around for four years. Fox Nation was launched in 2018 as a streaming service. Now, Fox Nation, the website was a blog that existed, but they launched on February 20th. I'm sorry, it was announced on February 20th, 2018, in a companion to the Fox News channel. It carries original and acquired programming catering topics of interest of the network. The Fox Nation uh, uh, name originates from a website Fox News had launched in 2009. The news, the, the, I'm sorry, the news service was announced for a debut in late 2018 and was described as being catered to super fans of Fox News news. Some of the original programming on the service included Nuff Said with Tyrus, What Made America Great with Brian Kilmeade, and Sincerely Cat, hosted by Cat Timpf. Diamond and Silk had a program on Fox Nation, but were dropped, blah, blah, blah. Sure. In 2021, the service began to carry, carry Tucker Carlson Today, a spinoff of Tucker, Tucker Carlson Tonight. Tucker Carlson would also begin to produce original documentaries for the service under the banner Tucker Carlson Originals. Fox Nation began to stream Fox News Channel primetime programs, such as Hannity and Tucker Carlson. It's absolutely amazing, my friends, that these people do not realize. They don't get it. CNN Plus is trash because they lie, they cheat, and they steal. And Fox News is far from perfect, but explain to me. Oh, I'll tell you what they'll say. Well, it's because Fox News are grifters and they lie. Uh, Okay. Perhaps you guys in the CNN world just need to recognize that regular people do not like what you have to offer. Congressman Troy Nell says the media invested more time trying to dox libs of TikTok than reporting on the Waukesha massacre, the Brooklyn subway terror attack, or the January 6th bomber. What are their priorities? I'll tell you exactly why. CNN plus fails. It's because nobody wants to watch it in the first place because it's not a good network that doesn't produce good contextual information. That's it. Check this out from Newsbusters. Nets spend measly 52 seconds on Hunter laptop since New York Times finally acknowledged its existence. On March 16th, the New York Times belatedly confirmed that Hunter Biden's laptop is real, not an example of Russian disinformation. If the liberal broadcast networks were waiting for an all clear to admit the explosive Hunter Biden laptop story uh, that was reported on October 14th of 2020 was real and legitimate. This was it. They didn't. They spent a total of just 52 seconds on the Hunter laptop scandal. You see, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are like, I'd like to know about what this was about. We got an election coming up and CNN said, we're not going to tell you. NPR literally said it was not news. It was. It is and continue, continues to be. How ABC, this is from from Newsbusters as well, how ABC, CBS, NBC suppressed the Hunter Biden laptop scandal. So why do we want to watch any of this stuff? My friends, control of the narrative is paramount for political purposes. But we are breaking through the mold. We are challenging the system every day and we are winning. 
They can't just shut us down. They need to recognize they've lost. Maybe this November November will be the month they finally wake up to being crushed, defeated. And the people have won. This elitist machine that seeks to lie, cheat, and steal its way to power cannot survive, at least in my opinion. Though they've made tremendous gains, though there are dark days ahead, I certainly believe that. When you look at what's happening with CNN+, Plus, just goes to show that people are ready for something honest, something authentic. We saw this at the beginning of YouTube. Why were YouTubers taking off? Authenticity. We make mistakes. We try our best to correct them. My math was really off in the beginning, and it bugs me. Because I'm pretty good at math, and I don't know why I added a zero to that CNN number, making them sound like they were making more money. No, they're making no money, and they weren't going to make it back for a long time. And so, they don't, they, don't, they don't survive. I do think the merger played a role, but we're breaking through the mold. We got this story from Timcast. Elon Musk secures financing of $46.5 billion to complete cash purchase of Twitter. Given the lack of response by Twitter, the reporting person is exploring whether to commence a tender offer to acquire all of the outstanding shares of common stock. The filing states on Thursday morning, a filing with the SEC indicated that Elon Musk was prepared to make a tender offer to secure and close the purchase of Twitter. Wow. What a massive day. We hear that Elon Musk has secured the funding to buy Twitter. CNN Plus is imploding. Oh, man. Maybe this November is going to be epic. I don't like the Republican Party, but I'll take it if it means accountability and a reckoning for the Democratic machine and their media allies. Timcast.com reports in the 13D filing, the amended offer and the letter of intention state that Musk has secured financing and is no longer awaiting due diligence in his intent to purchase a social media giant. The filing states that Musk is ready to begin at negotiations immediately in his bid to take over the platform. Special shout out to our good friend Elon Musk, that one I mean literally, who made this announce this filing on 420. Bravo, good sir. The filing states the proposal was also subject to the completion of financing and business due diligence. But it is no longer subject to financing as a result of the reporting person's receipt of the financing commitments described below and is no longer subject to business due diligence. The filing states that Twitter has not responded to Musk's offer, resulting in his desire to enact a tender offer for the transactions. Quote, Twitter has not responded to the proposal. Given the lack of response by Twitter, the reporting person is exploring whether to commence a tender offer to acquire all of the outstanding shares of common stock at a price of $54.20 per share net to the seller in cash. Wow. A tender offer occurs when an investor proposes buying shares from every shareholder of a publicly traded company for a specific price at a particular time. The investor typically offers a higher price per share than its stock price, providing shareholders a greater incentive to sell the shares. According to the filing, Musk has secured $46.5 billion to close the purchase of the company with Morgan Stanley leading the fi- his financing of the deal. On Monday, Twitter filed a dividend distribution for shareholders with the SEC, allowing current shareholders to increase their ownership in the social media platform. The 8K filing with the SEC gave insight into Twitter's latest strategy to thwart Elon Musk's effort to purchase the company. The company's board has been hesitant to entertain the buyout by Musk, and it remains to be seen if Musk will be successful in his bid to take over the social media platform. He's going to win. Elon Musk will win. One way or another, Elon Musk will win. This dude is crazy in a good way. What did, what did they just announce? Record profits at Tesla netted Elon Musk another like $23 billion or something. Jeez. So is this dude now worth like $300 billion? And that does not include, I think the boring company is not public. And it's not worth that much. And I'm pretty sure uh, and SpaceX is not public. This dude's got to be close to a trillion dollars. SpaceX is is amazing. And they got Starlink. This dude's taken over the world with a with a with a crazy smile on his face. I don't like centralized power. I don't. But Elon Musk is the tip of the spear. There is a giant husk, a a a, a mold of centralized power, and Elon Musk is like a nuclear bomb striking through its heart. Do I like nuclear bombs? No. But what if there is a giant cluster of evil or danger that needs to be stopped? Something needs to stop the evil that is taking over this country. The people that think they know better than you, that would strip you of your rights. They do it every day with a smile on their face. Elon Musk may be a bull, 
rampaging through the ivory tower, much like Trump was. Is the bull dangerous? Yes. Do you want to stand next to the bull? Mm, No. But when the bull rampages through a corrupt system and purges the corruption, I ain't going to be complaining about it. I'm surprised more people on the left aren't cheering for this. I, I, to be completely honest, well, I'm, I'm not really surprised. I'm just saying they should be. Now, we don't need to cheer on oligarchy, but um, it's funny to see these people say billionaires buying social media is dangerous for our democracy. And it's like, who do you think owns them now? Billionaires, a bunch of them, Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street. You think Mark Zuckerberg is a good guy? No, I'd rather someone come else, someone else come in. Elon Musk is promising to come in and bring back free speech, which will be crazy. But you know what? Elon Musk is right. He'll make money doing it. He secured the funding because he's going to make money for everybody. What Twitter is doing is violating their fiduciary duty. What a crazy day, huh? Elon Musk, CNN. Here's what's happening. Elon Musk is making an offer. He has the money. The Twitter board needs to fulfill its duty to its shareholders and see if they want this because it will make them money. They seem to be avoiding it. A tender offer now bypasses, which is effectively the negotiation phase. Elon Musk could go to the board and say, how do we do this? They're not responding. So now he's like, "Okay, well, I got the money. Let's see what's going to happen. And if they don't respond, I'll just outright make the public offer. Boom. There it is. Please, Elon, do it. I want to see Alex Jones come back. Donald Trump come back. The best thing they can say is that Elon Musk wants to spend $50 billion. Which is, I think Trevor Noah said, said this because he was like, that's how badly white people want to say the N-word. Ooh, da, 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 da. It's how badly we want to talk about politics and engage in the public square and challenge the lies from corrupt institutions like CNN. The Hunter Biden laptop story should have changed the face of this country with people realizing that Joe Biden is as crooked as they come. I can already hear the collective wailing of the left saying, but Donald Trump was corrupt, too. I think so in different ways. And there are Trump supporters get so mad. They're like, no, he wasn't. He was perfect. Look, man, Trump tried having I think it was the G7 at Trump Doral. Dude, I don't care. He was like, but I was going to do it so cheap. It was going to be good for everybody. No, we don't play that game. Conflict of interest. I don't want to hear it. But Donald Trump doing something like that makes me roll my eyes. And when we yell at him and he stops, okay, fine, we can move on. The things he was doing, it was better for the United States. Truly was. Better economy, lower unemployment, four-day work weeks, all that good stuff. It's been nothing but chaos under Joe Biden. I know, I know the pandemic and all that stuff, but that's still his leadership. I think under Donald Trump, there were some things he was worth being criticized over. You've got to criticize every single person. You can't just be like, those things by Trump were fine. With the Trump Doral thing, you can argue he was going to save the government money. We should have done it. No, we shouldn't. We want to spend a little bit extra if it means no conflict of interest. Trump says he was going to host them at cost, but that still means his costs are being covered. If Trump Doral needs, you know, a million bucks a month to operate and they're not bringing in a million bucks and then Trump says this event will cost a million bucks, he is covering costs he otherwise could not have. Not greatly, not turning a profit, but it does help him. It also creates brand power and across the board, not something that should be happening. They also advertise Trump golf resorts on like government websites. Not a fan of any of that stuff. I think Trump poorly represents American culture. As many people said, Hillary was the worst of American government and Trump was the worst of American culture. But you can have a guy who's a potty mouth and talks about grabbing women. It sucks. I'm not a fan of that. Decorum matters. But he made people's lives better. How do we, as the American people, succeed in the face of this manipulation? We need to challenge the system, and we're doing it, and we're winning. It took some time. You know, I kept saying, we need people to stand up, push back. And you were. It just took some time for that wave to hit these corporations. Now you got the news about that former McDonald's CEO who started an organization to challenge wokeness at the corporate level. Elon Musk has stepped up and said, I'm going to buy Twitter and I'm going to fix this problem. And you know what? He's going to get rich doing it. When Elon Musk takes over Twitter, comes in and says, Alex Jones, welcome back. You are going to see tens of millions of people sign up and get active. When he says, Donald Trump, welcome back. You are going to see more people sign up and get active. This will increase the value of Twitter's stock and their revenues and will be good for the shareholders. Why Twitter isn't doing this? 
They like to say, they, they, they like to push lies. Nobody wants to be here with all the hate speech, blah, 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 and the left will quit. I mean, look at Will Wheaton. He quit because Alex Jones is on the platform. Let them leave. Let them leave. I think it's funny that someone can say something that, you know, people don't like. So instead of just muting or blocking someone, they just outright throw a temper tantrum and leave. And then Twitter says, but we need to keep them on the platform. So they ban the likes of Alex Jones. I'll point this out. Alex, you should not have gone up to Oliver Darcy and screamed in his face and called him a bunch of names. This is what they don't like. And I honestly don't like it either. But free speech, free speech. It, Twitter does not have the right to determine that because someone is mean, they're not allowed to be on the platform. I think Twitter is a, is a hellscape of psycho a psychosis. I tweeted that trans people should have guns. And now leftists are, argue, are, are, are actually saying it was a joke because they cannot accept that I agree with their right to keep and bear arms. So they must, he, he was joking. What, and then, and then it's, it's actually really funny because I break their brains. They're like, what is the joke? I don't understand the joke. And no one does because it's not a joke. Because I literally was like, trans people should have guns. It's funny. It's just absolutely funny. These people pretend to be angry. It is one big stupid lie. A grift as it were. You know what? The narrative is breaking. I have no problem saying that we need CNN Plus, these other outlets, to crumble. We need alternatives like TimCast.com to grow. You know what I'll say? I would love to not do this job. And that's the truth. Part of me every day says, what if I just didn't do any work? What if I just went out and threw a Frisbee? What if I just went to the skate park? The other day after work, you know what I did? We finished a seven-foot quarter pipe, which has, uh, it, has it, it gets two vert, but there's no vert. There's no real vert. It like curls right to it. A vertical ramp, you know? And I was doing some airs, jumping up, wee. Went on the half up in my basement, and I was like, what if I just did this all day? Ignored all the crazy. Life would be easier. Life would be better. And at this point, I could certainly retire and live well. I could focus on non-public facing businesses. Uh, we're going to be opening uh, probably a, a cafe of some sort slash venue. That's one of our next big projects because we want physical space. It'll be in uh, West Virginia, probably in Charlestown. We're going to do all of these things. I could just open some brick and mortar shops and then drift away. I could, but I won't. Because this fight is important. These liars need to be stopped. They need to be called out and someone has to do it. And I'm the, I'm the kind of person that feels like if the job isn't being done, I got to do it myself. So when I see people doing things, they're not doing it right. I, I have to do it because it, it's, it's, it makes me go nuts. If I'm sitting down and I watch someone and they're, say, trying to put a skateboard together and they're doing it wrong, I get really frustrated. I'm like, let me do it. I'll do it faster. I just I'm the kind of person that can't sit there watching someone do something wrong. Have to do it. When I see CNN lie and just generally be evil. It's frustrating. Stop lying to people. Then when I see other media outlets coming out, I'm like, you guys are doing it wrong. What are you doing? They wouldn't listen. Vice wouldn't listen. ABC wouldn't listen. Well, here we are. I made my own and I'm doing it right. And we're growing. Chicken City already today, as of 1 p.m., brought in $1,400. We're launching our family friendly gag cartoons. We put that up. Our first video from Chicken City is up today and it's hilarious. It's called Everyday Life Living with the Rooster. And I tweeted, anyone who's ever owned or lived near a rooster will understand this joke. It's funny. You, you should watch it. But it's just general gag humor. We're going to build culture. We're going to engage in culture. And that's everything we have on TimCast.com right now. We're going to be working on our OTT app, means over the top, which is TVs, smart TVs. Then you're going to log in. It's going to be like any other platform. And when you log in, you'll get access to all of our shows. We're starting small. We're going to get big. We're going to work on everything. We've talked with people about launching sitcoms. The Cast Castle vlog, we are looking for a showrunner because we're, the, the, we're, we're, we're building it up. Always what we do is we start small. We start where we can and we build from there. The goal for the Cast Castle vlog is to make it kind of like a sitcom slash vlog. So it will be mostly real stuff from the castle, but we're going to mix in sketches and jokes. We've already been doing that. Now we need to get it together on a daily basis so it'll have similar humor to like 30 Rock or The Office. It will be a fictional version of a real space to build culture, to make funny content, and make you laugh and enjoy your life. We are coming to change things, and we are winning.
Bravo to Elon Musk and goodbye to CNN. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all then.